So what's the what's going on here is we have a diazonium salt, we got a diazonium salt, and we have copper nitrile. So when you see a diazonium salt, you should immediately think, well, there's obviously a really good leaving group on the ring. So the ring here is not going to be the nucleophile; it's going to be the electrophile, and you're going to add a nucleophile to it. So it should tip you off to nucleophilic aromatic substitution, right? Na nucleophile adds nucleophilic aromatic substitution. So you should also know right away that the product is this. All right, and then the copper plus is still around, right? Is that balancing the charge? Yes, it is, right? It's overall has a plus charge. So it makes sure charge is all balanced there again. So you should be able to look at that and know right away you're going to do a nucleophilic aromatic substitution, and this is the nucleophile. It's going to substitute out something on the benzene ring. So how does that work? Basic conditions was the first step in basic conditions. Addition. Addition, right? The nucleophile adds. We can't do an SN2 because it's an sp2 hybridized carbon. So we do an addition reaction. It's like a tetrahedral intermediate now. We went from something that was sp2 hybridized to now something that's sp3 hybridized. Anytime you make a tetrahedral, a tetrahedral intermediate, you ask yourself what? Is there any good leaving groups? And if there are, let them leave. N2 is a really good leaving group. Bring those electrons down, make that pi bond, do that elimination. And that gets us to that product. Notice the arrow is now one way because you've made a gas, right? So that's going to shift equilibrium and that's going to bubble out a solution. So once you make the gas, you're not going backwards anymore. It's not possible. So that's that. Nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Nucleophile adds. Substitutes for something. Nucleophilic aromatic substitution.